Let us start this off with a joke, shall we? Here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Louis C.K. Ah, don't open the door! Louis C.K.'s brilliant stand-up routine is full of hilarious, relatable, everyday observations and some self-deprecating bodily humor mixed in with his interesting, brutally honest take on family, religion, politics, and sex. Really nasty, strange, gross stuff that made us all laugh. But turns out some of it was based in reality. But it's not all fun and games in the world of comedy. Often there is sadness and shame and perversions, which comedian Louis C.K. was able to expose about himself in more ways than one. But his jokes made us think. They opened our minds to a deeper truth about ourselves and the whole frickin' universe. He is one of the biggest, most respected names in comedy, and deservingly so. But you know, like I said, underneath his sweaty t-shirts and all of his silly jokes were deep, dark secrets that many knew about, but few voiced until it was hashtag trendy. Louis C.K. may have been a cute, family-friendly animated dog on the silver screen, but he was a dirty, dirty dog behind closed doors. And on stage, like right in front of us, hiding in plain sight. This comic genius had a slow burn rise to fame that all came crashing down when tales of his disturbing behavior came to light and suddenly the culture of cancel culture canceled him. But then he won a Grammy. So now it's time to ask the question that's been on everybody's mind. What the f happened to Louis C.K.? Wow, they kicked his ass, what happened? What did he key somebody's Camaro? What did the guy do? But to truly understand what the fuck happened to Louis C.K., we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1967, Washington, D.C. His stage name is not so different than his real name. He goes by Louis C.K. because his name is Louis C.K., which is pronounced C.K. So he just changed his name from this spelling to just the letters C and K, making everything easier for everybody. He would gain an early appreciation for comedy by listening to the albums of George Carlin, Richard Pryor, and Bill Cosby. While growing up in Boston, C.K. soon discovered his passion for film. And at the age of 17, he made a short film called Trash Day, which actually garnered him some attention from the NYU Film School. But instead of going to that prestigious college, he chose to pursue his other passion, stand-up comedy. At the age of 18, he would attend his first open mic night in Boston, but it did not go well. And that scared poor little Louis away from performing again for around two years. He would hone his act and eventually get back on stage and start to build a bit of an audience around the Boston comedy clubs. While appearing with fellow comedian Dennis Leary, who allegedly, apparently, liked Louis C.K.'s material so much that he allegedly, apparently, stole one of his jokes, or just happened to have the same thought come to his mind, but we'll never know. And this joke is how being an a-hole is just a far better life when you just fully embrace your a hole I think you saw me do them. I know you saw me do them, and I think they just went in your brain. And I don't think you meant to do it. By 1989, Louis C.K. moved to New York City to fully embrace comedy, because apparently that's what you do. Even appearing on such shows as An Evening at the Improv and Star Search, while also opening for Jerry Seinfeld, in addition to following his passion of making short films throughout the 90s. As almost every comedian in the early 90s has done, CK would try to get on Saturday Night Live, SNL. But that didn't happen, and that really took a toll on him. 
as he planned on completely quitting comedy if no good gigs came along soon. Luckily, there was a new late night host in town that was willing to hire fresh young writers. And that is how Louis C.K. was hired as a writer for Late Night with Conan O'Brien. By 1995, Louis C.K. was an in-demand writer, having written for The Late Show with David Letterman and Howie Mandel's Sunny Skies. Louis would use those talents to become the head writer for one of the best sketch comedy shows ever aired on television, The Dana Carvey Show, even though it only aired for seven episodes. This series would help launch the TV Funhouse sketches that made their way over to Saturday Night Live, SNL, which also caused Louis C.K. to finally make his way over to Saturday Night Live. SNL to help write some of the TV Funhouse shorts, before eventually hosting four times. With his star on the rise, Louis C.K. would appear on HBO Comedy Half Hour, before being hired to write for The Chris Rock Show, another one of the greatest sketch comedy shows ever made, where he would be nominated for three Emmys for writing, eventually winning in 1999. This collaboration would prove to be strongest for CK as he and Chris Rock would collaborate on several projects, including co-writing the Heaven Can Wait remake Down to Earth in 2001, which tanked with critics yet still managed to grab $71 million off a $30 million budget, although most people agreed that Chris Rock's talents were wasted on the watered-down PG-13 screenplay. Then Louis CK stepped into the director's chair. For the film, Hootie Tang. Louis said that he was fired from the project during post-production, and says that although he enjoys parts of the movie, he agrees with Roger Ebert, who called the film a train wreck. He put his thumbs in the downward direction. Even with its modest $7 million budget, Pootie Tang only made $3.3 million at the box office. Shh, it's supposed to be boring. I'm, I'm trying to put you to sleep, that's why it's boring. But in the world of comedy, Louis C.K. still had much respect. He would land gigs for writing Cedric the Entertainer Presents, while landing his second HBO half-hour special on their one-night stand weekly program. And he even took a small role in a film called London, with Chris Evans, Jason Statham, and Jessica Biel. I didn't see it, did you? With the success of CK's HBO special, the network asked him to develop a series, which would lead to him creating Lucky Louie in 2006, a half-hour weekly sitcom using the traditional three-camera setup that would take full advantage of the freedom airing on HBO had to offer. Unfortunately, the series was canceled after just one season. It was around this time that Louis C.K. was able to get back into making his short-form videos, which he really loved making. Although now they would include more documentary-oriented material, with Louis C.K. acting as host, with his dry sense of humor. By 2007, Louis C.K.'s fame was beginning to build, become massive. People started listing his name along with the people he grew up listening to, especially after the release of his hit HBO special, Shameless. Although he would follow that up by reuniting with Chris Rock in the writer's room for I Think I Love My Wife, which would be another failure at the big screen only making 13 off an $11 million budget, with critics saying that it was a waste of Chris Rock and Louis C.K.'s talent. 2008 would see Louis C.K. release his next stand-up comedy special, Shoot Out, which would hit number five on the Billboard Top Comedy Album chart thing, while also appearing in roles in films such as Diminished Capacity, Welcome Home Roscoe Jenkins, Role Models, and the Ricky Gervais film, The Invention of Lying. I'm black. I knew it. Oh, you're very light skinned, but I can see it. I always wanted a black friend. Me too. But it would be back on the small screen where Louis C.K.'s life was about to change. After putting in the time and work over the years, and pulling off small but lovable roles in shows like Parks and Recreation, he would launch his next show this time simply titled Louie on FX, back at a time when putting your show on FX was risky. In this show, Louie, he would play a fictionalized version of himself, you know, a lonely single father who does stand-up, 
And this show, Louis would feature some of the biggest names in comedy in guest roles. Louis C.K. says that he took a substantially reduced payment from FX in order to retain creative control, as he would serve as the writer of Louis, the director of Louis, the star of Louis, and even the editor of Louis. That's right, Louis C.K. was even clicking and cutting, a true artist who truly has a vision and makes it on all stages of production. You gotta respect that. And that gamble of taking full creative control would pay off, as the series would be nominated for 22 Emmys, winning three, including two for Louis C.K.'s writing. This series would tackle more serious topics, while also being hilarious, including when Dane Cook would guest star as himself in a scene that dealt with how it seemed like Dane Cook had stolen a few jokes from Louis C.K., which may or may not be true. The show Louis was always funny because of Louis's natural demeanor. It just felt real, which at times kinda made you not like the character, but respected Louis C.K. for going there. Many compared it to the early work of Woody Allen, and you know what? They're kinda right. And I mean that as a compliment. The show is frickin' brilliant. It's an artistic piece of art. The success of Louie brought the star to a whole new level. Suddenly, everybody wanted to work with Mr. C.K., appearing in films from legendary filmmakers including Woody Allen in that movie Blue Jasmine and David O. Russell in that movie American Hustle, while also appearing alongside Robin Williams in The Angriest Man in Brooklyn and Bryan Cranston in Trumbo. But his biggest success on screen would come by way of his voice when he made that voice come out of a Jack Russell Terrier. In the $894.3 million grossing animated extravaganza called The Secret Life of Pets in 2016. This film would spawn a sequel, The Secret Life of Pets 2, although Louis C.K. would not reprise the role because of, well, we'll get to that later. By this time, Louis C.K.'s name alone would get a project greenlit. This would lead to him helping create such shows as Horace and Pete, Better Things, One Mississippi, and Zach Galifianakis' Emmy-winning Baskets while also never wavering from that thing that people loved him for, his hilarious, brilliant, disgusting wit. With 2010's Hilarious, which would be nominated for two Emmys and win the Grammy for Best Comedy Album, and the FX special Live at the Beacon Theater, which would win the Emmy for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Music or Comedy Special. Also, the independently released Word, live at Carnegie Hall, and there was also the HBO special Oh My God, which would win an Emmy for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Special, followed by the FX special Live at the Comedy Store, which would win an Emmy for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Special. He also had some pretty funny stand-up on Netflix. He became the go-to guy for any comedy-related special because he was such a respected figure in the community. He would pop up in things like I Am a Comic, followed by HBO's Talking Funny, CNN's The History of Comedy, and 2020's Showtime series The Comedy Store. But then it all came to a crashing halt. As respected in the world of comedy as Louis C.K. was, there seemed to be a little secret in the community that everyone knew about, but barely anybody commented on. Much like Bill Cosby before him, but not as bad, but still bad. The fame and clout he had achieved through his amazing career meant that the seedier things he found enjoyment in were often glossed over. There were rumors and rumbles here and there, such as a 2012 Gawker article about a beloved comedian who would like to do some unsavory things, and everybody kind of whispered that maybe Louis C.K. was one of the uh, usual suspects there. Over the years, many publications would ask Mr. C.K. about these alleged incidents, and he would always give some sort of answer like, I don't talk about rumors, or I want to focus on the work and leave my personal life out of it. No comment. 
<laughs> what do you want me to say? I mean, I'm sorry. In late 2017, the world had changed. With the October article detailing years of sexual abuse by mega-producer Harvey Weinstein against numerous women. It was the birth of the hashtag MeToo movement. One by one, big-name celebrities began falling like disgusting dominoes when their criminal and perverted private lives came to light. And then, in November of 2017, the New York Times posted their article with the headline, Louis C.K. is accused by five women of sexual misconduct. The article would detail several instances of Louis C.K. inviting aspiring female comedians to his hotel room for a post-show drink, and then once in the room, relaxed, he would ask these women if he could take out his, um, his Jack Russell Terrier, his Louie Louie, his penis. And because he's a funny, funny man, these women mostly thought he was joking, because, you know, that's his style of humor. But Mr. Louie was not joking. And when they laughed it off, his pants just came off. Getting completely naked and touching his Louie Louie Jack Russell Terrier in front of them, much to their horror. While others said they would try and leave, and he would stand in front of the door, continuing, blocking them, until he was done. What the f And that's why I never felt the need to help you not be hated by a lot of people. Much to the surprise of everyone, because the playbook for these things is to deny, 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 the very next day, Louis C.K. would release a statement where he would confirm the story was 100% accurate. C.K. finally acknowledged what he did to these poor women, saying that he never thought it was wrong because he always asked first. He thought it was consensual, he says. But now he realizes that what he did to these poor women was put them in an impossible, disgusting situation. His letter sounded good, but it was also a bit of a nothing burger when you realize that CK is a talented wordsmith. That's what he does. It's what has made his stand-up so popular and relatable. But the actions he was accused of, including having his manager call and threaten some of these women by saying that they would never work in this business again if they went public with their horrible experiences, this was far more serious than a, gee golly, I didn't know, I'm sorry. But yeah, this letter of apology in the mind of many, it was not enough. After this, Louis C.K. would be dropped by his management company and agent, while FX severed all ties with the comedian, canceling Louis, which was a great show, but f*** it. This also included canceling an animated show called The Cops that he was working on, and canceling a film that was fully completed called I Love You Daddy about an older man falling in love with a much younger woman. It was completely pulled from distribution. And I haven't seen this one, but I believe some people said that there's a scene or a character who likes doing that thing that Louis likes to do in front of people that don't really want to see... You know, the thing. I heard it's in this movie, but I don't know. Is it? Have you seen it? I don't really want to watch it. Plus, Mr. Louis C.K. was dropped from the already in production The Secret Life of Pets 2, with the voice of Max being recast with Patton Oswalt, as well as being redubbed in the Disney show Gravity Falls. Louis C.K. would step out of the limelight for a while, no doubt in a blatant out of sight, out of mind move, but it wouldn't last very long. In August of 2018, there were reports of Louis C.K. going back and doing what he does best, stand-up comedy, at New York's famed Comedy Cellar. These gigs would become hot tickets in the city, often selling out. In 2020, he would release his first stand-up special titled Sincerely Louis C.K., where he would address the allegations 
to a sold-out crowd in his hometown of Washington, D.C. How is 2018 and 19 for you guys? <laughs> Of course, controversy would erupt around the release when Louis C.K. was not only nominated but also won the Grammy for Best Comedy Album. He would follow that up with a massive sold-out tour across the country in 2021 and 2022, along with a new one-hour special simply titled, Sorry. When did we start measuring deaths in 9-11s? When did that become the new how many football fields long is it <laughs> for mass death? How many 9-11s was World War II? Can we look it up? I know the Holocaust was 2,000 9-11s. He would receive a Grammy nomination for Best Comedy Album, followed by returning to the film world with the 2022 film Fourth of July, that many critics had a hard time enjoying as they felt that it was just Louis C.K. trying to justify his actions. In 2023, he would release his next stand-up comedy special, Louis C.K. Back to the Garden. So, the question is, where are we with Louis C.K.? He is undoubtedly one of the best stand-up comedians of all time, with his disgusting dry wit and his keen observations. And his work on the big screen and small screen has often been very relatable. But his actions off screen is where everything kinda ends. We often ask ourselves if we can separate the artist from the antics, but sometimes it's hard. As far as Louis C.K. is concerned, I still find his material quite funny. But in the back of my mind, I am thinking, uh, 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 uh. Is there anybody in the ocean of darkness? Is anybody As an audience member, you have to ask yourself, are you part of the problem for still enjoying this entertainment from somebody like Louis C.K.? Or... You can ask yourself, are you willing to give somebody a second chance after they acknowledge and apologize for their mistakes and at least try their best to do actions to make things better? Has Louis C.K. done enough to make things better? Uh, that's up to you, and it's up to those women, actually. Oh. Hey, yeah, 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 I'm going. Yep. I doubt his career will ever get back to what it used to be. It's kind of hard to imagine Louis C.K. voicing a family-friendly film ever again, but I doubt he even wants to. But he's back to doing what he has always been best at, standing up and telling jokes into a microphone. Love him or hate him, Louis C.K. is here to stay. So you are allowed to give a f about what the f happened to Louis C.K. if you want to. But all things considered, like it or not, he's doing just fine. I don't know, that's, I don't know any more things. Those are all the things I know. <laughs>